it, we're grateful that you all are taking the time tonight to interface with us and get to know a little bit more about athletics. Um, I'm going to just kind of act as the moderator of sorts because what we've done is we pulled together um, a cross section of people that are involved with athletics and recreation at John Carroll. Um, and I've asked them to give a little bit more about their experience, what they do, their role, and really what makes John Carroll unique. Um, because this is really a special place and it is a, an extended family as we like to call it. Um, as mentioned, I've been, I am an athletic director and I've been in uh, that capacity at John Carroll for just about two years. Um, so with that, our, our spans of athletics is we oversee, um, our team oversees 23 varsity sports at the NCAA level and about 700 student athletes. And then we also work to support the recreation side. And we have Matt Clark with us tonight. We'll hear from a little bit later, who's our director of recreation. Um, we have about 1,500 students that participate in different capacities, whether it be club and intramural sports uh, and recreation in general. And he'll speak more to that. But um, without further ado, so we keep to kind of some time, we will welcome questions. And as mentioned, Abby um, can help us as we navigate through. But I want to start with, with our coaching staff first. Um, then we're going to move to some perspective of our student athletes. We have two current student athletes uh, on, on the Zoom call with us tonight. Um, and then I, I want to introduce you to some other administrators um, that work in athletics that help to support student engagement and activities and really what makes the atmosphere what the atmosphere is with, with all of our sports. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over first and foremost. I'd like to introduce Coach Rick Fanati. Um, coach Fanati is our head football coach. And um, what I'm gonna ask everyone to do initially is just kind of give us an uh, introduction of uh, who they are, um, you know, how long they've been at John Carroll, what their role is, and um, just maybe a, a sentence or two about what makes John Carroll so unique or maybe that um, an outside perspective wouldn't know. So Rick. Thank you very much, Michelle. Really happy to be here today with you and, and uh, really exciting time for John Carroll. The way we've adjusted this pandemic and our leadership, Michelle, and our president has been incredible in the work with the coaches. Um, my name is Rick Fanati. I've been the head football coach for my fourth year, uh, four exciting years. And just, you know, every year I'm learning something more and more about the school and uh, about our players. And, and one thing that I want to leave you with is really what all our athletes, not just the football, but all our athletes, men and women sports, is leaving a legacy. You, you look at the legacy of an, a college degree from John Carroll's incredible. But the experience you get playing four years sports and then integrating it with the rest of the sports is pretty incredible. And what we look at a legacy is it's investing in relationships, not because you want something, but because you want to build something. And when you come here, you're going to build something not only on the field, but off the field through service, uh, through education, through leadership. And that's probably the biggest thing that I want to leave you with today. And for those that are uh, already committed to the welcome, for those that are thinking about it, we welcome you. And any questions you have, particularly for me, you know, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Uh, the next one I'd like to introduce and turn you over to is Coach Kelly Marone. Kelly is our head women's basketball coach. Hey everybody, um, again, excited to be here. What a strange way to meet new faces that hopefully we see walking around campus very, very soon. But um, as Michelle said, I'm Kelly Marone. I'm the head women's basketball coach. Really excited to be entering my now eighth year um, and honorably so in our athletic department to, you know, I think all of our coaching staffs and programs really do complement one another. But one thing I want you guys to think about, because this is really important, when you look around our athletic department, you're going to see GAs, part-time assistants, full-time assistants, and even head coaches that were in your very shoes. So we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk, and we really want to hire back those that have served us. And I think that our student athletes want to extend their stay at John Carroll and pay it forward to the next champions in all of our programs because of how much they were valued. Thanks, Coach. Uh, I'd like to next introduce you to Coach Dan Milanovic, who works with our men's soccer program. Hi, everyone. My name is Dan Milanovic. I am the associate head coach and recruiting coordinator for the men's soccer program here at JCU. Um, I've been at John Carroll for 18 school years, four of them as a student athlete, and the last 14 as a coach. So I will finally be able to say in the class of 2024 that I've been at John Carroll just as long as you guys have been alive uh, over the 18 years. Um, why John Carroll is unique to me is 
uh, a word Michelle used in her intro, and that's family. Uh, whether it's internally as our respective teams or as an overall athletic department. Um, you can go to a women's basketball game on a Wednesday night and you're going to see a bunch of football players in the stands rooting on the girls. You can go to a women's volleyball game on a Tuesday night and the soccer team walks in after practice and there's 40 guys cheering in the stands. And it's just a very, very streak supporting streaks atmosphere overall. And this is not something that's new. Even when I was a student back in 2004, I went to the final four to watch the men's basketball team compete. Um, it's just the overall very family oriented atmosphere, very genuine, and uh, it feels like home away from home. Great, thank you. Um, I'm next going to introduce some of our student athletes. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I think it's really important that um, you all hear from people that are living in experience right now that are student athletes at John Carroll. Um, we've, we've asked Gwen and Michael to join us today because they're involved in a lot of things across campus, not just athletics, and I think that's important. They're leaders on their respective teams um, in not only athletic ability, but also in the classroom and across campus community as well. Um, so first, Gwen, I'd like to introduce you. Um, you are a member of our swim team. I'm not going to get into the details, but if both of you can give us um, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit more. If you can give us what your year is in school, what you're studying, and what you're also involved in um, on campus outside of athletics, as well as what maybe drew you to John Carroll or what, um, what you've been pleasantly surprised about with your experience as a student athlete here. Okay, yeah. So hi, guys. My name is Gwen Ledrick. I'm a junior here at John Carroll. I'm studying integrated marketing communications with a minor in entrepreneurship. As Michelle said, I'm on the swim team here, but I mainly swim like the breaststroke and I am events. Um, across campus, there's so much you can get involved in, but what I'm doing now is I'm currently an intern for our Russert department. So I do a lot of marketing and branding for them. I'm also the publicity chair for John Carroll's Dance Marathon, which is something that we just started up last year, which raises money for um, kids in University Hospital Rainbow Baby System. I'm also a member of the Carol Crazies, which is our student fan club organization, which I believe Dana will touch on later, but it's a great way to get involved in athletics at John Carroll. Um, and then before Corona and everything hit, I was also doing weekly service at um, a homeless men's shelter downtown. Um, and then when it comes to why I picked John Carroll, one big thing for me when I decided I wanted to do a sport in college was finding a school that I would be happy at without my sport. And when I was, searching all these different schools, John Carroll was the perfect fit for that. I could find myself excelling in the classroom and getting involved on campus, but also being involved in my sport, being competitive and still loving it. And I don't think many other places can offer quite like the balance and blend that John Carroll does. And my whole experience, I have nothing but good things to say about it. I mean, the relationships I've created, the skills I've gained from leadership roles or just being a teammate and interacting with other people. And then like the overall community is something I don't think you'll find anywhere else. It's truly like a blessing to be part of such like a fun and loving environment that I get to support and be a part of every day. Great, thank you so much. Michael, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Michael is a member of our men's soccer program. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Edelman. Like Michelle said, I am on the men's soccer team. I'm a junior right now studying uh, business management and human re resources and sports studies. Uh, around campus, I am in the honors program. I'm a Bowler College of Business student ambassador and I am on our student athlete advisory committee working with Dana. And I also work for Matt in the recreational department and our sports info department. So that's one of my favorite things about John Carroll, kind of like what Gwen said when I was trying to decide what school I wanted to go to. Just picking a school for soccer was never going to be an option for me. I had to find somewhere that I would fit in everywhere else on campus as well and really be able to customize my experience. And I've been able to do that. And that's why I love John Carroll so much. There are so many other opportunities to get involved around campus, whether it's academic clubs, in campus ministry doing service, or in the athletic department. There's just so many things you can do. And like Gwen said, if you ever did quit your sport, which we obviously hope would not happen, I am still very confident that you would be happy being a John Carroll student. 
And that's what I really value about my experience too, is that it allows me to grow as a person. Our coaching staff, the athletic department, the people we work with really care about us growing as people. They want me to be a good soccer player, but even more than that, they want me to be a good person. My time management, my communication, my leadership skills have improved greatly since I've entered as a freshman, freshman year. And like the football team says a lot, but we're copying it now. We say 40, not four. So John Carroll really cares about your 40 years beyond your experience as a John Carroll student, not just the four years you spend on campus. And that's a really big thing for us, us going out and being successful in our career, because very, very rarely are any of us going to go on to be pro athletes. So you need to be able to set, be set up for success after your playing career is over. And one little thing I like to always say is Coach Dayon can confidently say that he's happier when he hears about one of us soccer players getting hired or getting a job offer for after they graduate than he is when we get all conference or all region or all American. That's what really matters to them. And that's what makes my experience as a John Carroll athlete so special. Great, thank you to both of you. And um, maybe there'll be some questions specific for the student athletes. If, if you have any questions, um, that I'm sure that they're happy to answer those as well. I'm gonna shift gears a little bit next here and I'm gonna turn it over to Matt Clark. Matt is our director of recreation. He's been with us for about a year and a half and is uh, working uh, to in increase opportunity and offer new things. And I'll let him share a little bit on what we're doing with the campus wellness and recreation area. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, as Michelle said, my name is Matt Clark. and I'm the director of recreation at John Carroll. Uh, I oversee all of our recreational facilities, programs, services, and staff. Uh, and I'm excited to give you a little bit of overview of uh, some of the things that we provide as an experience on campus. I'll start with our facilities. Um, all students as part of the student activity fee have access to all of our facilities simply by bringing their student ID every time they come. Uh, our facilities include a two court gymnasium with a suspended track above it, a six lane lap pool with a diving well, uh, a racquetball court, the Corbo Fitness Center, which includes most of our cardio and strength equipment. Uh, and we recently converted two racquetball courts to a brand new fitness studio uh, that also serves as a functional fitness space. Uh, and that is where we uh, host a lot of our group fitness classes. Uh, group fitness at John Carroll is no additional charge for students, faculty, or staff. Uh, we have certified instructors and currently we are offering three different types of yoga, Zumba, a cycling class, and pound fitness. Uh, so it's a really, really great experience if uh, you want to have a little bit more uh, of a group setting for your workout. Some of the other uh, programs and opportunities that we offer include intramural sports. Uh, again, no additional charge for our intramural sports. This is a recreational experience uh, where essentially John Carroll students create their own sports teams to play other John Carroll student teams. Um, we offer about 20 different leagues or tournaments every single year. Uh, those range from four to five week commitments where you might play once or twice a week. And we also offer some one to two day tournaments for uh, those of you who uh, can't commit to that long uh, of a, a sport. Uh, on average, about 900 to 1,000 individual students play intramural sports every single year. Uh, next, we'll move on to our club sports. Uh, club sports are right in between our intramural sports and our varsity sports. They're all uh, recognized student organizations uh, at the university. Uh, so they are all student run, uh, they pay membership dues, and currently we offer 10 different clubs. We have women's basketball, cheerleading, dance, ice hockey, rowing, men's rugby, sailing, ultimate frisbee, men's volleyball, and women's volleyball. These uh, groups and teams practice about two to three times a week and they travel across the state, the Midwest, and even the country uh, to compete against other universities um, in their various sports. They all have governing bodies, um, similar but not similar to the NCAA, but uh, they schedule their games and they travel and it's a really great experience for those of you who maybe aren't considering playing a varsity sport. On average, we have about 200 to 220 students who participate in club sports. 
And lastly, and the thing I'm most excited for, uh, is to talk about our student employees. Uh, we have about eight to 10 entry level positions uh, to, that help operate all of our program services and facilities. We're one of the largest student employers on campus and on average we have about 130 students working in different capacities. So if you're interested in a job, we are a great place uh, to start and to look for some really relevant experience. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have or you are welcome to reach out, me, reach out to me at any time, but thank you all for your time and again, thanks for being here. Thanks, Matt. Um, I, I guess it's also important to note that over the past year, um, we've made some enhancements to some of our uh, recreation facilities um, and look to continue to um, uh, fund ways to um, increase um, just what we offer and what our equipment and facility looks like as well. So um, that is, is definitely a future endeavor for us that we are continuing to be cognizant of. Um, the next person I want to introduce is Dana Funyak. Dana is an assistant athletic director and a lot of her responsibility is um, our external relations and marketing. As Gwen mentioned, she does a lot of work with the Carol Crazies. So I'd like her to um, introduce herself, um, tell you a little bit more about what she does, but um, also the opportunities that our students have engaging with the athletic department, whether they're an athlete or not or just some of the campus opportunities with spirit and engagement with the athletic department. Thanks, Michelle. Um, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, like Michelle said, my name is Dana Funyak, and I am the Assistant Athletic Director for Marketing, Special Events, and Community Engagement. Um, I myself actually graduated from John Carroll in 2012. Um, and I worked for Chris Wensler in the sports information department. So, you know, like Michael, I, I worked in that office for all four years um, and, and had a wonderful opportunity to experience athletics. So like Matt, um, having student employees, the sports information office also is an opportunity to pursue any positions in athletics um, and learn, whether it's broadcasting, PA, writing, there are so many different opportunities. Um, so some of the things that I do day to day um, is working with our student athletes, particularly. Um, one of my responsibilities is working with SAC, like Michael had mentioned, our student athlete advisory committee. And one of the biggest things that they help organize throughout the year is our D3 week. Unfortunately, this year we weren't able to um, see all of that to fruition because of the um, coronavirus, but we had some really awesome things planned and I'm looking forward to us working on them next year. Um, we have our Blue Carpet Awards that normally kicks off our week, so we like to honor and recognize our student athletes for their accomplishments on and off the court or field. Um, and then throughout the week, we do service opportunities um, and particularly raising money for Streets to the Max, which um, we have done throughout the years, um, raised quite a bit of money for them, um, which is an organization that helps support children with cancer. Um, it's pretty important to us and hits close to home, but that's just one component of service that our student athletes participate in. Like Gwen had mentioned, you know, a lot of our, our student athletes do many different types of service as a team, individually. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities and we actually recognize our teams um, with a varsity team service award that we vote on through at, at the end of the year um, when the team submit their service hours. Um, Gwen also mentioned the Carol Crazies, so I help oversee that, which is our student fan group. Um, they participate um, or they host different um, giveaway items at events or they'll have different activities um, at halftime as entertainment. They do a variety of different things. They also have transportation to um, select events off campus. So um, whether it's like, you know, to a game to the hockey game, a bus, fan bus to the hockey games um, or to, you know, Crosstown Rival BW, they do organize different things like that. Um, and just as a note, 
Um, if you wanted to go to any of the athletic sporting events, all you have to do is show your John Carroll ID and that will get you into the athletic event for free. Um, even if you were to go to say BW or another OAC institution, you can show your ID and get in for free as well there. Um, just want to also let you know that if afterwards you guys think of any questions for any of the panelists that you can feel free to send an email to athletics at jcu.edu and we'll make sure that we get your questions answered. Thank you. Thanks Dana. Um, so I think I hope what I hope through this platform is that you can see that um, you know, we all think that John Carroll is a pretty special place and um, that's why we all love what we do. And as an athletic director, one of my favorite things is watching, to Michael's point, the development of our student athletes as they walk on as a freshman at 18 and leave, you know, as in four or five years later as a 20, early 20 year old, uh, that transformation is, is really remarkable. And then when they come back, um, as young professionals or people that have just started a family, um, it's great to see that um, what they've accomplished and su what success like, looks like to them, but to know that we've been a part of, a small part of that is, is pretty special. So um, there have been a couple questions that pop up, but I also wanna make sure that we um, answer just kind of some general questions as well. So um, I'm gonna toss it over to, to some of the coaches or whomever wants to take this, but can you um, walk us through a little bit if there are people on this call or others that um, may be interested in the sport, but maybe don't know if they wanna commit fully or was a high school athlete or they haven't had the opportunity to engage or talk with you, where do they start? How do they get in touch with you? Um, obviously, you know, we won't get into the X's of O's of each sport in the specifics, but if you can kind of answer generally, um, what do you look for? What do you encourage? What would you recommend? Um, in terms of football, I really encourage to reach out to me directly. You can go on the website and, and um, as the head football coach, my email, all my contact information is there. Reach out to me. I've had a few, ironically, in the past week and, and even today. And the only thing that we do ask is, is, you know, some type of background, a little bit of background about yourself, why you'd want to play, uh, you know, the particular sport. But just reach out directly and just start a dialogue. Actually, one of our um, all-conference players is a walk-on for us. Uh, she took her freshman year off and thankfully befriended one of our captains. And um, lo and behold, it was a great get for us. But it kind of starts there, too. Um, talk to some of the athletes. Obviously, video always helps to see if that's going to be a fit. But, but the majority of programs, all of us, um, you know, are always interested to hear um, what you can bring. And, you know, we're always looking for that next glue piece and who knows if we've identified everybody it could be you um but surely there's an opportunity you just gotta take that first step kelly i want to build on that a little bit um and again open to any of the coaches but would you say that again each sport is different but would you say that um the qu there's a question that came in do you have to be recruited as a freshman to participate in varsity sports no, you don't. And I, I'm sure all of us have a story of a kid that, you know, we didn't even know was on our campus and then thankfully came through our doors. Um, a, a lot of times there's burnout across all of our sports. I think we would all say that from AAU and just the amount of games kids are playing. And, um, you know, it's just having, having a clear vision of really what you want. You know, it's, you've got to be certain that you want the commitment and also you know, be willing to be vulnerable and be in a tryout situation where it can be a little bit intimidating where there's already kids on that team. Um, but there's, you know, there's so many success stories of, of kids just kind of showing up in your doorstep. And if you're six foot five and a female, please come through mine. Yeah, I agree with Kelly. I think every situation is different, but obviously being a senior in high school, going into the collegiate atmosphere, not everyone's 100% sure they want to play. I think the, the most important thing Kelly said was you, you have to be ready to commit to the sport and really compete in a trial to be um, picked as a person, not only on the roster, but in the, the travel roster, the starting 11 or five or what, whatever it is for the particular sport. Uh, but there is, a, there is a demand, obviously, to be ready for the season and be physically fit and all those things. And if you're a fall sport for football or, or soccer like us, 
you know, it's probably not the best if you're going to email us on August 1st and tell us you want to come try out on August 15th and you haven't trained all summer. So I would try to make a decision sooner rather than later, but definitely reach out to the coaches. We're always looking for good players for our sports and anyone, anyone who, who can help us win games. Great. Thank you. Um, the next question I want, I would ask uh, Michael and Gwen to take a stab at it and then the coaches can help support kind of the answers, but can you walk us through how you schedule your classes and what that looks like? Um, do your coaches give you that information uh, ahead of time? Um, depending on what your major is, I know certain classes are only offered at certain times. Um, as a student athlete, how do you go about doing that and what does that communication look like between you and the coaching staff to know um, what you should be working around or looking for? I can go real quickly. I know for soccer, our it's a little different for us than other sports because our practice is seven to nine at night. So we usually don't have class conflicts with practice, but I do know every once in a while, there are players on our team who do have night classes. So in that case, yeah, there's a direct line of communication between the player and the coaches. And obviously they're supporting our education. So there was a starter on our team last year, actually our captain last year, all American he missed one practice every single week. And it was one of those things where he was in his senior year and it was only offered at one time and he had to take it to graduate and he had to miss practice. Our education always comes first and that's just the way it is. I do know for some of my friends who play other sports where practice may be during the day, it's, it's priority to try to schedule your classes not during practice. And that's obviously the goal, but it, it doesn't always work out. Yeah, so swimming is a little bit different because we have 60 kids on our team. We only have a six lane pool. It's nearly impossible to fit us all into one practice. So the way our program works is we actually have three different practices throughout the day. There's an eight to 10, a one to three and a 3.30 to 5.30. And you're given that schedule at the beginning of the year. And you, it just kind of works with like piecing together, like what works with that. Like there's some days I'll practice one to three and other days I'll practice 3.30 to 5.30. But having those different options, you don't really run into a lot of conflict with um, scheduling classes. I know last semester there was one senior similar to like what Michael was saying. Um, she had to work and couldn't make any of the practice times, but our coaches like worked around that and she was still able to come in and get her practice in. So it's a very flexible program. Like again, our education always comes first. So if there is conflict, there will always be some way to work it out. Um, but as far for me as scheduling, like it all comes down to time management with also being a student athlete. Just know what you're capable of doing and schedule yourself around that. And it's a lot easier than you think. Coach, has anything to add from your perspective? Um, you know, we have a lot of education majors and those, those classes typically in their later years, junior, senior go at night. So we often have kids coming in late or leaving early. Um, we try to have them section off a, a block of time that hopefully we can practice, but you gotta remember at John Carroll, you're, you're gonna be a student first. And you know, we don't schedule around athletics, we schedule around our academics. And um, most of the time you're gonna find that your professors are gonna love you in their classrooms. They always talk to us about athletes being the leaders in their groups um, and they will work with you if there's conflicts and, and that's very rare. Um, but again, it's, you know, you're coming here for that degree and all the coaches know that all the support staff knows that, but they also understand how much your athletic experience means to you. So we all work together fairly well. Great. Thank you. Um, one of the next questions I have that's come in is regard to what kind of educational support is available to student athletes. So um, as a Division three institution, um, you know, our bandwidth, uh, we do a lot with what we have in terms of personnel. Um, but like a lot of Division three institutions, we rely on our peers across campus as subject matter experts. So um, whether it's study tables that some of our um, sport teams put in place, um, there's a great relationship given the high touch of our campus and that um, we, we could ask our student athletes to communicate a lot with, with their professors. Um, if they are a sport that is plays outside and like, for instance, in the spring that the schedule changes often based on weather. Um, it's having deliberate conversations 
Um, coaches often will produce uh, letters that student athletes can take to professors to say, hey, here are, here are the days that I potentially may be missing class. Um, but beyond that, uh, student athletes, coaches, um, what are other ways that you would say that we support uh, or resources that we can utilize to support our student athletes? And it kind of piggyback for, you know, what you said about study tables. Football-wise, with us <clears throat> being in the fall and, and you're getting the experience of being a student for the first time at college, a, a, a great demand weight room-wise, training, a football practice. It's really important, one, that we – each of our coaches is designated as not only your position coach, but he's also your um, – academic advisors. So we have a strong connection with Mary Claire Maroney and the academic advising. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot of um, communication on our end and your end and what your needs are, but we do carve out a time, especially that first semester for uh, study tables. And then we also guide you in, in select the proper courses to take that, the, especially the academic advising. But, um, you know, to reiterate what Michelle said, it's a lot of it is on the student to communicate and, and seek out the professor, seek out the help on campus. There's, a, there's some great resources on campus. We do a lot of peer tutoring too. Um, we're heavily involved. Every one of our players has to go to the writing center. So really just getting to know those early on in your career is going to be very beneficial to you. But um, that, that's pretty much, I don't know if I answered the way, the way you wanted, but that, that's how we have done it. I think another thing that's uh, not just resources on campus, but internal resources for your team, what kind of happens once you get into your athletic roster, you'll see guys kind of separate into what they major in and then what grade they're in. And so they kind of make their own study groups and own, own uh, study tables based on those two things. So again, like the chemistry guys kind of go do their thing or all the sophomores who have similar classes go do their own thing. And you'd be amazed the kind of, of, support and help that these guys can these guys or girls can offer for one another just w within their own roster uh, before the it even comes to a coach or an assistant coach or whoever but like coach Renati said like the writing the writing center the tutors academic advising there's so many resources on campus the number one thing that you need to do as a student athlete is to make sure you ask for help if you need it because there's nothing wrong with that I know when I was a student my freshman year I had to go see a calc tutor twice a week um, the entire semester and it helped me uh, it helped me get a good, good grade in the class. So at the end of the day, as long as you're willing to ask for help, you'll be able to find the help. Yeah, that's a good point. I think and from the lens of administrators, um, we get grade reports often, um, you know, so from a compliance perspective to make sure that student athletes are eligible to participate in the NCA. Um, you know, there's constant conversations. And if, if somebody's struggling with something, then let's make sure we find them the help that they need so that we can get them back on the right track. So it's really truly a team effort. Um, and as many have illustrated to this point that, you know, the division three philosophy and something that is loud and clear at John Carroll, these are, these are truly scholar athletes, they're student athletes, that academics comes first. Um, you're here to get a degree and, and we're blessed to be a part of athletics as well. Um, Dana, I might throw this one to you, um, but other people can certainly uh, jump in here. Um, can you walk us through a little bit about work study or day on as you work with sports, sports information a little bit? Um, how does one go about finding what jobs are available specific within the athletic department? Um, how do they apply for them? What areas do we typically employ student workers? What does that look like? Sure. So within the athletic department specifically, um, like I had mentioned, there's the sports information office. Um, and then there's also um, the athletic and equipment um, office that you can work out of. I know Kelly, one of Kelly's athletes um, particularly works down there as well. So as a lot of our other athletes do as to um, as far as work study goes, I believe that's based on your financial package that you receive. Um, so they will be able to tell you if you qualify for work study. Um, but as somebody who did work in the sports info office and qualified for work study, I was able to use that opportunity as a work study. Um, Matt, I don't know if there are any differences for you for your opportunities, but that's what I, I, I do know um, on that front. And I believe all positions um, that will be available at the university, whether it's in athletics, rec, or anywhere else are all gonna be on Handshake. Um, 
which is uh, provided through our career center. So we can um, try and drop some information into the chat about that if um, we need additional information for you guys for Handshake. Sorry, I was muted. Matt, Dan, anything else to add? Or students no. like Michael, Gwen, anything like is, would you say it's challenging to find a job over the years? Have you found what you were looking for? I'll jump in before the Michael and Gwen talk. I think students who are looking for jobs are, are able to find them. I, I think that's the main thing. You, you have to be, you, you have to want to work and, and to, to find a job. I think it's very rare, rare where someone comes in our office and is like, hey, I, I can't find a job. And if they do come in the office, we find one for them pretty quickly. Uh, and again, using resources like your own teammates or coaching staff, usually you'll, you'll, you'll get pointed in the right direction pretty quickly. Yeah, kind of going off that, like John Carroll has so many opportunities. Like if you want a job, you can get one. But one of my favorite things that I've noticed is you can pretty much find a job with whatever you're interested in. If you're interested in sports, you can get a job in sports information. For me, I want to go into like marketing and advertising. So I was able to find a job on campus that related to that. And I know that works across all different departments. So no matter what you're interested in, you can still find a job on John Carroll's campus that is like relevant to what you want to do. Great, thank you. Um, Matt, I'm gonna toss it over to you. Can you um, tell us a little bit, there's a question, are club sports an all year thing? And then we have a follow-up question once we answer that about rowing. Sure, um, so for the most part, our club sports are a academic year long commitment. Um, because these are student run organizations, uh, it, the, the nice part about it is it's really up to those uh, groups to determine kind of what their commitment is for the year. As I mentioned earlier, most of these clubs uh, belong to a nationally recognized governing body who schedules their games or has a regional or a national tournament and, you know, plays in a legitimate conference or league. Um, some of our clubs uh, have their competitive season in the fall, and then they maybe schedule their own games in the spring some clubs vice versa, and then other clubs are competitive year round. Um, so it really just depends on the group. Uh, but for the most part, our clubs are practicing two to three times a week and competing uh, throughout the entire academic year. Uh, Did you see the rowing ahead. question? Sure, yeah, and I can go ahead and address our rowing club. We had a question about kind of the status of our rowing club. Um, so at the moment, we are working with the officers to uh, hire a new coaching staff for our rowing club. Uh, over the, about the last year, they've kind of been on a bit of a hiatus, uh, trying to get their club a little bit more structured, organized, and, and get back into business. But we are actively working to uh, get that club functioning as it was previously. Uh, the club rows down at the Cleveland Rowing Foundation downtown, uh, and they have a, a pretty rich history of, of competing and, and working with other schools in the Cleveland area. So I can tell you that we are, are working on that coaching staff with the goal of that being in place for the fall. But obviously with the current situation that is uh, halted a little bit. So um, if any of you have specific questions about the rowing club or about any of our other club sports, I would encourage you to email recreation at jcu.edu and we can reply with some more specific information uh, rather than share that uh, throughout this Zoom call. Great, thank you. Um, I know that there are a lot of other questions that have come through, um, but in effort and time, I think that there's a big one that I wanna take the opportunity to address. And then uh, folks wanna stay a few minutes later, we certainly can, can answer some of the other more specific ones, but um, there's some questions that have come along about fall sports seasons and what we know or don't know right now about what actually might happen and when given the coronavirus. Um, it's funny because we're all asking the same questions. I'm asking those same questions to leadership at the institution, to leadership at the NCA. Uh, our coaches are asking those questions of me. Their student athletes are asking those questions of them. Um, so what I can tell you right now is that uh, like everything in this uncertain time, we are, uh, we are leaning on the advice of experts, meaning government officials and medical officials that will guide us to what can happen when safely, because safety first and foremost is what's important to us. Um, 
Currently, right now, the athletic directors are within the Ohio Athletic Conference, which we are a member of. We have a call on Friday morning. We've had multiple calls and meetings this month um, for contingency planning and what that looks like and modeling, um, you know, in the event that the virus spikes again later in, in the year. Um, we need to be prepared for anything when and if it crosses our paths um, so that we can be proactive with a plan and not reactive. Um, we are also uh, working with, with the OAC presidents. Ultimately, it'll be their decision in terms of what uh, changes or adjustments might need to happen, if any. We certainly would like to operate as business as usual, but again, health and safety is our, our utmost concern. Um, beyond that, the NCAA next week, the Management Council will have a meeting, so that's the highest governing body within the NCAA for Division III. Uh, we'll have a meeting Monday, Tuesday, and I would expect some additional information uh, to come out by the end of the month or into May uh, once we know more. But given that it's a very fluid situation, I wish I had a better answer for you um, because it's one day at a time right now. Um, we are, are looking to, you know, as things ease up into the spring, uh, you know, we, we're going to looking to have our, our campus staff back uh, again once it's safe and once we're allowed to do that with the appropriate appropriate uh, parameters in place and distancing. Uh, but we also know that our student athletes, uh, you know, we are uh, in, a, in a world where everybody wants to get back to normal the best of, that they can. So getting back to the workouts that have been modified in their homes or outside uh, without proper equipment sometimes, um, you know, we're all going to be at a one step at a time to address the situation so that we can get back to normal uh, as safely as possible. So um, I know that's not a very specific answer and probably I don't have a crystal ball to tell you, but I can at this point reassure you that, um, you know, we are, we're being fluid with the situation and addressing things as they, they uh, come across our desk, but knowing that um, we want to do so once it's safe to move forward. So Abby, um, I guess any other, like I said, we can stay on the line a few minutes later if people have time to answer some of the other specific questions, but Abby, anything that you'd like from a housekeeping perspective or things that we maybe forgot or missed? No, I think you covered it all. We are so grateful for everyone in the room tonight. Um, I know a good handful of you probably want to get to the next session, so always feel free to hop off when you're ready. Um, but uh, thank you so much. I think there's just the one question I see. I don't know if this is an easy one to answer. Um, when we expect to have uh, the physical forms available on, online or available to the fall athletes. Um, so coaches or Dana, uh, Dan with sports info. I don't know that that's not open yet. I don't know the answer. Typically it's done, um, early summer, um, because that they are due in August, but can one of you maybe give a little bit more information that I don't know off the top of my head? Yeah. We usually send those out in our preseason packet that goes out the first week of May. So this is around the time of the year where we contact our, especially for fall sports, we contact the trainers asking them to kind of prepare those um, documents for the student athletes so they have the summer to, to get them done. The one thing I will remind people that it's a, it's a very common misconception, your physical has to be done at John Carroll. You do not need to get a physical at home. I think a lot of people still think that if you go to your doctor at home and get your physical, that that's going to count for your physical at JCU. And unfortunately, that's not the truth. It's great. It's great to get checked out and stuff like that. But our physicians and our doctors and our trainers need to be the ones to evaluate you and clear you to play for, for our athletic department. And I wanted to clarify, there's also the health record form that students are aware of that are on their JCU gateway. That is also a very separate document um, unrelated to the athletic physical that you would need to get done. Thank you. Um, I believe I've, there's only one other question, Abby, maybe you can help sort through the chat and make sure I haven't missed any others, but about golf. Um, so the golf season is a split season, but in the eyes of the NCA, it's, it's actually a spring sport. So there is a fall segment um, where there is some matches um, that are played, but the official OAC tournament or the NCA tournament is actually in the spring. Great. I don't see any other questions at this time. I know Dana or Dana mentioned there is an email address that you can use to send any additional questions. Um, athletics at jcu.edu. 
Um, of course, questions can also be sent directly to your enrollment manager, and we'll be sure to send those questions to the appropriate individual. So uh, once again, just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, we hope to see many of you join our campus community um, to be part of the class of 2024. So thanks, everyone. If I want to say hey, thank you, and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.